across their bombs upon the single pier that remained, and upon the sand dunes on which the troops had their only shelter. The beach itself was just mayhem. It was hell on earth. Hell on earth. Ray Dunes, Vermoot, Esquebec. The province of Dunkirk in France is peaceful, but 75 years ago, it was the site of the mass evacuation of Belgian, French and British troops. In 1940, the German army attacked the Allied lines, and Gunnar Garth Wright was one of the evacuated servicemen. This is his story of Operation Dynamo. On the 10th of May 1940, the forces of the Wehrmacht invaded France through Belgium and the Ardennes Forest. Thought impassable, the initial assault by land and air caught the Allied armies completely by surprise. By the 20th of May, the British Admiralty, seeing the unfolding situation, planned for the evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force. By the 21st, the remnants of the BEF and the French were trapped around the port town of Dunkirk. Gunnar Garth Wright, 51st Light Anti-Aircraft Regiment, stationed in France, talks about his journey to the beaches. We couldn't do a thing because the refugees were coming back, uh, everything was chock-a-block, all the roads were chock-a-block with refugees. Um, I was sent down to headquarters down at Amiens um, with a truck. Uh, I got cut off by the Germans there and um, I managed to make my way back. I could, uh, by that time, of course, the, um, it started uh, uh, homing in on Dunkirk and uh, you could, at night, you could see uh, your goal, you could see where you wanted to go with Dunkirk. It was just a red glow in the sky. Mm -hmm. I got up to Dunkirk eventually, picked up the, um, <coughs> what was, uh, what I could find of the unit and <clears throat> all the um, static guns in Dunkirk they were all taken out every one was uh, picked out by a Stuka it was just like normal target practice to a Stuka it just dived at the gun pit using that as a target release a bomb all the all the Beaufort crew could see coming at him was a little thin line, a Stuka, almost impossible to hit, and they could see the bomb leave the plane. I knew damn well that it was curtains for them, and that every static pit in Dunkirk was picked out with a direct hit, and all the crew were up on the sandbag surround. On May 24th, Hitler ordered a halt to the Blitzkrieg. Without any warning, the tanks and infantry halted. Matters still much to debate to this day. Different historians and veterans try and give some explanation for Hitler's decision. Historian and battlefield tour guide John Cotterill explains why Hitler gave the infamous halt order. Given on the 24th of May to stop the Panzers from advancing, uh, and the, the, the best assessments we can make uh, first of all, Hitler had fought himself in the First World War in the Flanders in the in the wet Flanders area, uh, and he knew uh, you know the, uh, the, the wet conditions, and he knew with inundations and flooding, uh, it wasn't ideal territory uh, for tanks. Uh, secondly, um, once the 24th of May had been reached, he realised that the British Expeditionary Force had been defeated, and and he wanted therefore to keep his tank force intact to use against the bulk of the French army, which was south of the River Somme. Now, as it turned out, the, the French army south of the River Somme didn't fight and, and surrendered extremely rapidly. But Hitler wasn't to know that. And once you know, he realised that we were you know, heading back in retreat, uh, he didn't want to waste uh, tanks and have tanks destroyed, which he would need to take on the bulk of the French army. The majority of the armed forces deployed by the Germans were regular troops, but embedded within the assault were members of Hitler's Waffen SS. En route to the beaches, whilst cut off at Amiens, Garth nearly had an encounter with one SS unit. Got on my truck and uh, went down to um, 
ambulance got cut off in the meantime and I was having a beer on the curbstone and as soon as every time a, a, a British squatty sat down or stopped, dogs and children used to come around him like, you know, and this little fella, little French lad, he came over and sat beside me. He didn't say anything, he just sat there beside me. I gave him a bar of chocolate from a loot and I had a bottle of beer and sitting there in the in the sun and relaxing on the way back for half hour. Suddenly he said, I'm a man, I'm a man. And the blessed um, German half track went along the T junction and uh, it was SS boys up there and uh, they didn't take prisoners out, you know. So, uh, for me, I thought, this is it. So, uh, I dropped everything, got into the truck and uh, took a chance and went where they came from and uh, started on my way back. A few miles from the village of Askelbeck lies a small barn. On the afternoon of the 28th of May, members of the Leibstein data Adolf Hitler murdered 80 British troops from the Royal Warwickshire, Cheshire Regiment and the Royal Artillery, as well as a French serviceman. Each cross represents a fallen soldier. The farm and field which they were marched across. A few yards away is a pond and a tree. This tree marks the spot where Captain Lynn Allen was shot in the back of the neck. These men died defending the troops evacuating from Dunkirk. Satin was slit trench <coughs> for, um, oh, I should think it must have been about 24 hours. And they, <coughs> they called for volunteer stretcher bearers. So I thought, well, anything <coughs> rather than sit here. I got up out of my trench and uh, along with another fella, picked up uh, a young lad on a stretcher. He was in a very bad way. Um, took him out on what was left of the mole. Took him aboard the Codrington, which was a destroyer. And uh, put him down. I turned to go back again to the beach. And the captain uh, kept me on board. I didn't, I didn't argue with him and uh, <laughs> fine job. So uh, I stayed on board the Codrington. When I got to uh, um, to Woolwich Arsenal, uh, I was given a blanket roll and uh, a bowl of soup or something, and um, uh, we were told then that if we had anywhere in the London area to go, um, we could have a 24-hour pass. Uh, I went across there and. Uh, and uh, they opened the door to me and gave me a, um, a great welcome and uh, took me down uh, the local pub, uh, um, parading me around as if I was some sort of a hero. I felt anything but a hero. When I looked around and saw the poor old boys from the First World War with one arm and gassed and things like that. But those were my honest feelings. I felt as if I was a card and certainly didn't deserve the the drinks that they were toting me up with. Um, but anyway, that was my personal feelings at the time. By the end of the last day of the evacuation, 338,000 members of the BEF were back on English soil. 26,000 Frenchmen had also been evacuated. The efforts of the little ships of Dunkirk and the Royal Navy made this operation the success that it was. However, the majority of the BEF's transport and equipment littered the beaches and French countryside, and 68,000 either dead, wounded or missing. <laughs> 